Hi, this is Derek Ong, and uh, this is video number two on using Smart PLS as a hands-on approach. Uh, my first video was um, um, explaining about the difference between um, CBSEM and um, Smart PL uh, PLS, um, and also the roots of PLS. So I would like you guys to take some time to just watch that video just to have a bit of a theory and a background uh, before moving on to the series of videos so remember that this is a series so it'd be good that you try and watch the video from video one onwards so in this video i'm going to be uh, dealing with uh, how to deal with smart PLS and especially how to deal with uh, missing data which because there's a lot of theories between uh, missing data what we need to do is the, when we uh, deal with missing data, we must always make sure that we clean the data uh, and uh, of course uh, deal with some data entry uh, in SPSS. Uh, I'm sure you know how to use SPSS. If you don't know, please watch my video uh, series on SPSS. And then we need to save the uh, data as a CSV file. Uh, this is going to be a separate video how on how to show you how to save this uh, uh, data set as a CSV file. Please uh, watch the next video. And then we how to export into PLS when we deal with uh, the next video, which is how to uh, put it into uh, PLS. So in any publication, most publications now would like you to deal with uh, missing data and really ask you very specifically how you dealt with those missing data. Uh, the most common one, of course, people deal with missing data to indicate a negative 99 uh, in those missing columns, but uh, apparently some smart PLS, uh, new smart PLS, uh, can recognize uh, uh, empty cells as missing data. Uh, and of course, you know that missing data is quite a nuisance. It, it could be due to the fact that some respondents did not uh, put in certain, uh, fill in certain uh, variables within your questionnaire, and that could be quite a problem especially if you're dealing with social science. Um, make sure you switch off the labels when you save your SPSS and CSV file. Uh, missing data should never be more than 15%. That is uh, a given. Uh, and if you're going to be using categorical variables, make sure you put those categorical variables on the values as 0 and 1. Missing data imputations options, you've got to treat the missing data options in the SPSS before saving it as a CSV file. So. Uh, one of the more famous ways of dealing with uh, 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 missing values is uh, using this thing called the uh, mean value or the midpoint. But some researchers say that uh, this will lead to quite some bias when you're dealing with um, the uh, analysis because we are talking about variance maximization here. So whenever we use the midpoint, we, we are actually... Um, kind of uh, uh, devaluing the, the, the analysis of variance maximization. So one of the alternatives that I'm going to be introducing to you is this thing called the expectation maximization, which is kind of like the uh, using all the information in the data set and to um, recalculate uh, what would be the expected value uh, in that missing cell that you run with SPSS. OK, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now, this is a data set uh, called uh, the adoption for a technology. Uh, and all these are information uh, in the indicator variables for the latent variables. I'm going to explain to you what latent variables is. Um, uh, except for uh, this SD, which is also collected from the, um, uh, what do you call this, uh, the respondents, uh, but we're not going to be looking at this SD for now. What we're going to be looking at is, you notice that there is a missing value here in CP3, uh, uh, respondent number 6. So, how are we going to deal with this uh, missing value? We go to Analyze. We go to Missing Value Analysis. Now, I'm just going to reset this for a while. So make sure you uh, hold down your shift key and um, transfer all the variables which you're going to be using in your um, analysis. Yeah, 
except for the uh, social desirability because we're not using that for calculation into the quantitative variables make sure you click on em and em i'm going to create a new file so i'm going to save the completed data file and then write to a new file now you can either uh, re uh, you know, um, overwrite the, the, the current file, which is adopt. Or, uh, in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new file, okay? Which I'm just going to call adopt missing. But don't worry, um, in, the uh, in the next videos, I'm just going to use back the same adopt, okay? But uh, note that we have already dealt with the missing value here, but I'm just going to show you what this is. So, as I save this new file, continue. Okay, uh, this is the calculation of the EM, which I'm not going to go through with. But if you want to, you can send me an email. I can explain some of these things to you. Uh, and this is the adopt missing. And there you have it. That's the new missing value there. Okay, and you notice there's a lot of decimal places. So this is how the best way of dealing with your missing data. So I would like you, if you're going to do any new um, analysis, to use this as a uh, way of dealing with your missing data. All right, that's for now. The next video is going to show you how to save these uh, uh, data set into CSV. Thank you.